Well, from the gas station to the grocery store, we are all feeling the squeeze of inflation. Yeah, just look at the numbers. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the price of eggs has gone up nearly 40%. Butters up 24, milk 17, and cereal to go with that 16% higher. Inflation and nutrition go hand in hand. Because of those rising costs, people are buying less expensive foods, and less expensive often means less nutritional value. Now, doctors across the tri-state area are seeing the effects. Joining us today is cardiovascular disease expert, Dr. Dr. Nidhi Kumar to explain all of this. Thanks so much for taking some time yeah. to talk to us. We really appreciate it. So how are you seeing the effects of inflation medically? Yeah, so the changes that we're seeing, unfortunately, are not subtle. We are seeing big changes in numbers, increase in blood pressure, increase in blood sugar, and increase in blood cholesterol. Sometimes the more economical choices are not the healthier choices. And unfortunately, we're seeing these changes already in the doctor's office. So we're not talking about just a physical issue, as you mentioned, but it's also a mental issue. They're kind of combined. So what kind of effect is that having on people? So there is a very strong dose response relationship between food security and mental health. So the less food secure you are, the worse your mental health. Yeah. So we are seeing, we're you know, still dealing with the mental health fallout from the pandemic. Yeah. And so this food inflation is only compo compounding these issues. I had the opportunity to talk to a colleague of mine, Dr. Robert Cohen, and he is a psychologist and professor associated with the NIH. What he shared with me is patients that are food insecure are experiencing more anxiety, more stress, more depressive symptoms. And and that worry carries into the household. So it creates very stressful conditions in the home and children are very vulnerable to this type of stress. It can affect their mental health, it can affect their academic performance. So we are seeing a very broad range of physical and mental effects. So that's what I wanted to ask you as you discuss children. Who is being the hardest hit here? So right now the hardest hit group actually are our seniors. The seniors make up the largest group increase entering into the emergency food system. You think about it, so there's fixed income, high cost of prescriptions, and now high costs at the grocery store. So people are having a real challenge making it all work. 63% of senior, seniors that are visiting food banks are actually saying that they are eating less to pay for medical costs. And then after seniors, it's low income families. Uh, a recent study, it was over 3,000 participants done by coupon birds, found that 42% of people are saying that they are either cutting down their portion size or skipping meals. So not only are we seeing physical changes and mental changes, but people are actually changing their behavioral patterns to deal with this food inflation. So now let's talk about solutions. And you say you have, you have split them into three categories, government, community, and household. So let's start with government. What are some of the solutions we see there in that? So from the standpoint of the government, the government is absolutely responding, which is great. We are seeing increased available funds in the form of food stamps, WIC, um, in 2023, 20, 2023, seniors are going to see a rise in their Social Security yeah. allotment uh, over 8%. So we're hoping that's really going to help. On the community level, it's important for us to access what we have in the community. Food banks, we have community kitchens, we have local farms. These economic structures exist. These are emergency economic structures that exist to actually help support us during this time. And what about if you get down to just the households? I mean, what can people do? What can families do? What can seniors do within their own residents. Right. So I think it's about being creative. So if we are creative and we make different choices, there's actionable steps that we can take to elevate the health in our household. So for example, well, let's just, you know, kind of first just talk about what are some of the pitfalls we're making at the food store. So it's a lot cheaper to buy canned vegetables. Right, but yep. the problem is when you eat something out of a can, you're taking in a lot more salt. And that bump in sodium can increase your blood pressure 40 points. So an option is buy frozen vegetables. They're a fraction of the cost, you can buy in bulk and you get the same nutritional value. 
I think you were also, I was just seeing there that you were recommending people instead of buying meats, maybe choose lentils, which are high in protein. Right, so globally, worldwide, one billion people use lentils as their primary source of protein. So if a billion people are doing it, there must be, there must yeah. be something to it. It's a fraction of the cost. Again, a cup and a half of lentils is the equivalent of a chicken breast. Yeah. So it's a great way to supplement a few meals during the week. Um, and also, you know, important to stay away from those processed meats because processed meats, again, less expensive, but you're increasing your fat and your salt content. The, also, the nutritional value in lentils also is fantastic as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I love to talk about cauliflower. <laughs> cauliflower I mean, you would think one. I've invested in cauliflower. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. I love to talk to my patients about it because yeah. it's got high nutritional value. It's a great substitute for uh, carbohydrates yeah. like pasta like rice a head of cauliflower is less than two dollars such a great idea and thank you so much for your advice you, here so important dr kumar thank you